A famous sniper is getting ready for his mission. He locks and loads his gun while a woman gets ready for her big date. She puts on some makeup and looks out of her window to notice a convoy of heavy vehicles entering her mansion. The sniper watches on as a mafia boss makes his way inside the mansion. The mafia man gets inside the hot tub and is ready to get freaky with his lady friend, but that's when the sniper lands a killer shot and blows open his skull. Now we finally get to see the sniper's face as he looks at himself in his hotel room mirror, feeling sorry for himself. He finally gives in and shoots the target. He is given an honorary farewell. Brandon walks away from Richard at first, but he has followed and offered to become a part of the joint task force. It's a lucrative opportunity for Brandon, especially because his father, Thomas, is the head of the task force Richard doesn't even consider Brandon's wishes and sends him on a flight to Bogota Brandon reluctantly goes to his destination, where he is greeted by a rather enthusiastic driver. Brandon is concerned about the scar on his face, but it just turns out to be a wild girlfriend. Now Brandon reaches his base of operations, where he meets his new spotter, Santiago, and after that he meets Captain Garza, who is the head of the task force. More importantly, Brandon meets Thomas, who is happy to see his son. Now it's time for the mission briefing, and Brandon is told about Jesus Morales, a Colombian cartel chief who is the prime target Morales is part of the family of six, which is notorious for all kinds of crimes, including drug trafficking and murder. Brandon is told that Morales' rival Diego was killed by a professional sniper, and we learn that this is the same person from the opening scene, thus fueling suspicions that Morales hires American snipers for his work. Suddenly, Kate Estrada makes her appearance and tries to act bossy with all the men in the room. She starts off the briefing and tells everyone that the mission to infiltrate Morale's hideout has been moved up by a day Brandon complains that he doesn't have enough time to prepare, so Kate has a private word with him and learns that he isn't here out of his own free will. Regardless, she decides to go ahead with the mission anyway the next day, Brandon and Santiago camouflage themselves and set up their sniping positions while Kate Garza and their team's alpha position themselves closer towards the suspected hideout. Thomas watches all the action from a control room and is confronted by one of his colleagues, Agent John Sampson, over the risks associated with this mission as Team Alpha moves forward and the snipers cover 300 degrees worth of view from the southern ridge. Thomas authorizes the attack and captures Team Alpha to go ahead as the team enters the hideout. A tense sequence follows, but this turns out to be a trap, and a bomb is set off. The massive explosion injures everyone, and then we learn that there's another sniper on site. The sniper, also known as El Diablo, attacks and injures Garza, so Kate tries to help him out, but El Diablo lands a deadly shot on Garza, so the team comes back to the base defeated. John is upset with the way things have gone down, and he demands an explanation Thomas states that El Diablo is a professional and actually wanted to kill Kate, but Garza had just gotten in the way. John wants to end the mission right now, but Kate begs him not to pull the plug. Brandon puts in a word and requests for 48 hours so that they can at least find out El Diablo's true identity. Thomas allows this request, and then he warns his son against the sniper. Later, the team enters a hideout spot, but Brandon isn't pleased with how open it is to a sniper attack. Meanwhile, El Diablo gets busy with his girlfriend, Mary Ramos, but gets interrupted by a phone call. His informant tells him that Kate is together with Brandon, so he needs to act fast at the safe house. Kate thanks Brandon for helping her with John and then they have a word about how difficult it is being in the army. Now both of them are discussing how El Diablo was able to pull off such an impossible shot Kate says she only wants to find morals, but Brandon scolds her for having such a narrow-minded view, she takes this to heart and walks away from him, after which she cries alone in the elevator, later, she goes to a local bar for a drink but gets harassed by a couple of weirdos, she takes care of them, and then she meets Father Carlos, hoping for some advice Carlos asks Kate to let go of the mission but she cannot afford to give up something she's worked on for so long. Carlos eventually states that El Diablo will lead her to Morales, but she cannot let him know her name or else he will kill her. Kate is ready to take the risk, so Carlos agrees to help her out. Now Brandon gets a tip from Santiago and checks out a sniping range at the safe house El Diablo happens to be on the opposite side, but Brandon acts fast and manages to fire the first shot. El Diablo is able to evade the shot and fire his own bullet, but Brandon avoids it with ease. Thomas and his team find the bullet fired at Brandon and send it to Richard for analysis. The team is surprised to see how advanced the bullet is, and then Richard has a brief reunion chat with Thomas as they are old friends. John asked to get back to work, but Richard was upset with him for not having a safe house that was actually safe. As the team plots their next move, we see Morales playing a game of pool with his boys. He loses some money but makes a scene and scares his opponent in a brutal fashion. He eventually spares him and says he was simply joking. Eventually his brutal Morales isn't impressed and simply tells El Diablo that his targets are still alive so he doesn't deserve the cash now. Kate and Brandon have a chat on their way from the hideout, but then Carlos gives her a call, 
and reveals Mary's location. Kate hides this information from Brandon, she questions his true intentions because it looks like he only wants to find El Diablo. Brandon is about to give her a fitting reply, but then they are attacked by a truck filled with goons. A brief shootout follows, and there are casualties from both ends as Santiago is killed. Brandon manages to get rid of all the goons, and then he spots the information about Mary on Kate's phone. She reaches Mary's home and asks to talk to her, but is attacked by some goons. Kate puts up a fight, but it's of no use as she gets easily overpowered. Things are about to get tricky for her, but luckily Brandon comes to the rescue. He shoots down some of the goons while Kate strangles their leader. Mary tries to threaten her, but Brandon holds her hostage. And then Kate knocks her down. She notices a necklace on Mary and finds El Diablo's image on it. Kate and Brandon send this image to headquarters, and then they tell Thomas that they are going dark because someone is listening in on their conversations. Thomas tells John about this, but his response makes it seem as if he is hiding something. Now Kate takes Brandon to Carlos, who says that Morales is a protected man. Brandon doesn't care and wants leads on all of Morales' men, so Carlos obliges, leading to a series of brutal deaths wherein all of Morales' men are being killed by a sniper. Richard tells Thomas that he suspects this is Brandon's work at night. Brandon and Carlos have a chat about how the sniper from earlier committed suicide. Brandon doesn't want to end up the same way, so Carlos says that the key is forgiveness. Later, Morales sneaks up on El Diablo and Mary in their bedroom. He wants the sniper to kill Kate and Brandon immediately because he's losing too many men. He even pays up half a million dollars in cash and promises another half after the job is done. Thomas finally learns that El Diablo's real name is Enrique, and he discusses a plan of action with Richard. However, John insists on flying Kate and Brandon out of the country, while El Diablo makes a deal with Kate's attackers. At night, the heroes get to work and look for El Diablo in the streets. After some surveillance, they spot a mystery truck, and the goons from earlier come out of it and leave Carlos hanging from a tree. Kate wants to go save him, but Brandon stops her, knowing it's a trap set by El Diablo time runs out, so Brandon shoots the rope to save Carlos, but El Diablo spots his rival and snipes at him after that, killing Carlos in cold blood. At Carla's funeral, emotions run high, but then Brandon spots one of the goons and chases him down. He eventually catches the goon and forces him to finally give up Morale's location the task force is informed about this, and they immediately apprehend their target. However, John wants to move Morales to Miami for his prosecution Brandon suspects that El Diablo will kill him before he speaks a word in court, and his suspicions turn out to be true as the sniper enters Miami without any hassles Brandon Thomas Richard and Kate discuss what to do about El Diablo because they know there's a mole informing him about everything. However, it's time to move because Morales is being transported for his prosecution John accompanies the team, but once they reach their sniping positions, Brandon tells John that the man in the convoy is a decoy with the real morale actually being in a white van. John is upset that he wasn't given this information earlier, but the team ignores him and carries on. Suddenly, El Diablo gets a message on his phone, so he pulls back from his position. After some time, the white van shows itself, and then El Diablo exposes his location by shooting at it. Some goons also arrive to attack the van, but Richard takes care of them now that El Diablo is open. Brandon immediately kills him with an explosive bullet. This is when it's revealed that Morales was always in the convoy. John is finally exposed as the mole, and he gets arrested after Kate smacks him down for being a traitor. After that, Brandon ignores his dad and goes for a walk with Kate.